Here we have what is probably the most confusing Pokemon, yet one of the most beloved, Wobbuffet. Where do I begin? Well, the beginning. Wobbuffet was introduced in Gen 2 and was mostly overlooked until Jesse of Team Rocket obtained one in the anime. And then it instantly stole the show. Just how lovable this blob is. Every time he burst out of that ball, a big old smile would appear on my face. Him and Jesse had a very interesting dynamic. She appeared to hate Wobbuffet, but deep down she loved him like a son. But what even is Wobbuffet? Well, the closest guess is that it's based on a punching bag, which ties into his battle capabilities. More on that later. But also based on a series of Japanese dolls and even a Japanese celebrity. In the late Sanpei Hiyashia. What a crazy design for a Pokemon. Now, Wobbuffet in battle is very interesting, as it can't directly hurt foes, but instead relies on reflecting or countering attacks it receives, like a punching bag flying back at you after you hit it. This makes using Wobbuffet a game of, can I outsmart the opponent, because of this. This Pokemon is often banned to avoid the unlikely occurrence that both sides use Wobbuffet, resulting in a stalemate. Well, even if I can't use this Pokemon, I will always love it. Who's that? Pokemon! The electric member of the bird trio, and the best electric type from Kanto, is Zapdos. It may have a weakness to rock, but that won't stop this awesome avian from being a great Pokemon in my eyes. Zapdos got a huge boost in usage in Generation 4 thanks to the physical special split, as well as being able to learn Heat Wave and Signal Beam to deal with Steel types, and something to deal with Ground types. His special attack can be a max of 383, which is pretty good. Other than having great special attack, I love the looks of this thing. The sharp feathers on its wings resemble thunderbolts. Some may say it looks ridiculous, but I just think it looks cool. Better than Colonel Sanders over here. At the time of writing this, Zapdos' Galarian form hasn't released yet, but I can say that swapping the electric type for fighting will make for an interesting physically based counterpart for Zapdos. Just release it already, dammit. Pokemon! Next up is the only dragon type debuting in Generation 2, Kingdra. For a long time, Kingdra was the only water and dragon type, and is still the best one to pull off if you ask me. He's been a fan favourite since his debut and I see why. If you ever find the rare dragon scale item in any game, please keep it. You'll want Kingdra, even if you already have a water type. Being based on the leafy sea dragon, Kingdra looks elegant but also regal, probably why King is in its name. In battle, Kingdra is well balanced, meaning there isn't much to complain about when it comes to battling. I mean, not a single stat goes below 70, so that's pretty good. One thing I would change is giving it more coverage since it rarely learns moves that aren't water or dragon. Not much more can be said other than to get one as soon as possible. Who's that Pokemon? It's been a while since I talked about a ghost type. Let's change that. Enter Bayonet. Let's get right into his concept. Bayonet seems to be based on the idea of a haunted doll, and its appearance and habit of sticking pins in its body may also reference to the popular concept of voodoo dolls. But this isn't what makes Bayonet stand out. It would be his Pokedex entries. Diamond and Pearl states that Bayonet is a doll that became a Pokemon over its grudge from being junked. It seeks the child that disowned it. The disturbing part is that we don't know what it would do to said child. Kill them? Torture them? Curse them? We don't know. Bayonet isn't super reliable in battle, but Gen 6 graced Bayonet with a Mega that boosts most of its stats, giving it a much needed push. And this design is awesome. If you want a ghost type, you can do much worse than Bayonet. Who's that Pokemon? The first Ultra Beast on the list is coincidentally the first one most players saw, Nihilego. Like most UBs, this weirdo has a very strange origin. At base level, it may just look like a jellyfish, but it also resembles a class of microscopic sidereian parasites that are known to cause infectious whirling disease in various fish species. Its design also resembles Lily, a main character in Sun and Moon. Remember how I said Nihilego is based on a parasite? Well, this is significant, because in the story of Gen 7, this Pokemon fuses with Luzumin, creating this disturbing-looking mishmash of human and Pokemon. 
I've not even mentioned its stats yet. Overall it has very good stats, but terrible attack and defense in particular. It shines in special attack and speed. I often use this Pokemon to set up stealth rocks or toxic spikes, as well as giving it a thunderbolt and power gem. I really hope Ultra Beasts are brought back in Crown Tundra. I miss using these wonderful freak shows. Who's that Pokemon? Here we have the second Alolan starter, and my original choice, Decidueye. Decidueye is based on various species of owl, such as the extinct Stilt Owl, which explains its secondary ghost type. Very sad when you think about it. Aside from this, it is also based on the Archer, since it fires its feathers like arrows, as shown in Spirit Shackle, a signature move. In battle, Decidueye is very balanced, as it's a mixed attacker. He has good defenses and decent speed as well. Like I said, I chose this Pokemon in my initial Gen 7 playthrough, because Rowlet stood out to me because 1. It's cute. 2. I love owls. And 3. Decidueye was leaked prior to release, and was easily the coolest looking one at the time, and probably still is. But there is one more Alola starter that I liked slightly more. You probably know which one I'm talking about now. Who's that Pokemon? Lucario. You either love it or hate it. I for one welcome Lucario. Lucario has helped me through three different regions. The egg that hatched into Riolu and Sinnoh led to Lucario being a member of my most recent Sinnoh team, as well as Riolu being catapulted in early Black and White 2 alongside Mareep which led to a strong team member in time for the second gym. And then in X and Y, Mega Lucario is straight up given to you. Lucario was the Pokemon chosen to introduce the concept of Mega Revolution. This is because Mega Lucario takes Lucario and simply makes him stronger, nothing more, nothing less. And the design change is small but effective. This Pokemon is based on Anubis of Egyptian legend, which is an awesome concept for a Pokemon. Lucario also has the distinction of being able to sense and manipulate Aura, the life force of living organisms. Now that's badass. This Pokemon is the definition of a mixed attacker. Any move you can teach it can be used to good results. Lucario is also a character in Smash, but I rarely use him, but I do love his Aura mechanic of getting stronger as he takes damage. Not to mention he's voiced by Goku. Lucario easily takes number 34 on the list. Who's that Pokemon? Another grass starter, but this time is not because of design, stats, or anything like that, but its appearance in a spin off, Grovile. Before we get into the nitty gritty, Grovile has a good design that I actually prefer over its evolution, Sceptile. It looks swift and badass. He's based on the Dramiosaurus and Geckos, pretty cool. Being that it isn't fully evolved, it's not very good in competitive battling, but that doesn't matter. Now for Grovile's role in Mystery Dungeon. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll let you discover this amazing story for itself. So please come and buy Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness, or Sky. That's it. That's all I can say. Next. Who's that Pokemon? The ancestor of all Pokemon itself, it's Mew. I know it's cliche at this point, but god damn it, Mew was a cute little creature. The original mythical, with 100 base stats across the board, as well as being able to learn every single TM. This is as well rounded as you can get. Literally infinite number of ways to use Mew. I personally like to use it as a baton passer, and passing speed and strength buffs to teammates. Also, being the ancestor of all Pokemon, its design looked kind of like a fetus. Cute. Mew also went on to inspire the likes of Jirachi, Celebi, and Victini. I can appreciate that. Really, everything that is said about Celebi and Jirachi can also be said here. Mew also spends its entire life playing and having fun. He's just so innocent. Like a child. Also, listen to Mew's voice. <laughs> Who's that Pokemon? Here is the final Alola starter I mentioned. By process of elimination, it is Incineroar. You can probably see that Incineroar is a bipedal tiger. Obvious design origin is obvious. But Incineroar is also a professional wrestler. His personality reflects this. 
It loves to fight but also to entertain, and it is said that it's good around children. In battle, Instin is no slouch. Its hidden ability is Intimidate, which makes it a good switcher when, when against a physical attacker. Despite being a wrestler, Incineroar is a very mixed attacker, but I would still recommend training it in physical attack. Incineroar is also one of the few Pokemon blessed to be included in Smash, being the only wrestler type character as well as one of the most expressive alongside the likes of Wario and Dedede. All in all, Incineroar is my favourite Alola starter by a slight margin.